All right, so today we're going to talk about empirical formulas. And empirical formulas are pretty straightforward. They're the lowest whole number ratio of all the elements in a compound, which is often what you already call the compound. For instance, NaCl is a empirical formula. So it's something like NaClO3, H2O, any low number. On the other hand, like hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, dihydrogen dioxide, if we're going to use it as a covalent bond, could be expressed as the ratio hydrogen-oxygen. The, the fundamental information of one hydrogen to one oxygen could be simplified. Likewise, for this simple sugar here, C6H12O6, it's really kind of the same ratio, at least, as CH2O. Now, that's not the whole game today. If that were it, we'd be done. Just divide by a common factor until it's in the simplest form. That's not what we're really trying to do today. What we're really trying to do is say, I've got this composition by percentage. So what's the, what's the actual chemical formula as an empirical formula? Now, the empirical formula may not be the real formula. For instance, if I actually have hydrogen peroxide, I think it's just OH. If I actually have CH2O, and it's actually this long sugar here, obviously you don't have the right formula, but it's the right step to that formula. So what we're going to do is a several step process that's pretty easy. And I'm going to walk you through this first one. Now, you've got a note packet in front of you, so let's take a look at that, pull it out, and we're going to look at the first example very quickly, and let's go through it really slowly, step by step, so we know what's going on. All right, so the first thing we need to do to do this problem is understand that what we've written here as percentages could be represented as grams, because if I had a 100 gram sample, well, then 72.7% .7 of it would be oxygen, and the remainder would be carbon in this case. Right? I, could, I could change the percent sign to a gram sign. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my table here, and I'm going to set it up in lots and lots of steps. But my first columns are just going to be the element's name, and each column or each row is going to be its own element, just like normal. And I'm going to replace the percentages with, well, grams. So it will look something like, uh, like this. So what you might notice here is that I've written out things exactly as they're given, except now the percentage sides are grams. So if I wanted to label the first column, which I, again, don't necessarily suggest you do on homework, but you should do on your notes, I would label something like this, where I replace the percent with grams. Now that I have grams, I can do a mole problem, right? If I have grams, it's equal to some number of moles. That's by definition what we've been talking about. And to find the moles given grams, I need to use the molar mass. I need to divide by the molar mass. So I need to find the molar mass, the AMU, of each of these elements. I can use the periodic table, and frankly, I can round pretty heavily don't like round 16 to 20 or something, but if it's like 15.999, make it 16. If it's like 14.01, 14. Right, you, it doesn't need to be super aggressive. So I need the AMU of each element, so let's get those really fast when we look at the periodic table. Great, so now I've got the molar mass in the periodic table, and I just need to take this cell here and divide it by that cell there. So uh, divide signs should show up right here. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this cell and divide it by the top one. So it's going to be 27.2 divided by 12, and the 72.7 divided by 16, which gives you some numbers you can get out of your calculator. Now I get a quotient, right? Again, this is just 27.3 divided by 12. Now these aren't whole numbers. It would be nice if they were, but they're not. And so I need to make them a ratio, where one relates to the other. And the easiest way to make that is the smallest number needs to be equal to 1. So I need to make 2.275 turn to 1. Well, that's easy to do. I just need to divide it by itself. So when I set this up, where every single number I find here is divided by the smallest number I found, something kind of like this. So I had to jump over here to finish it. And you'll see that I'm dividing everything by the smallest number. So I take itself times it's divided by itself, I get 1. And I take this number divided by it, I get 1.98, which is really close to 2. Now remember I rounded it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that 1.98 isn't actually 1.98, but it's rather 2. And you have to be careful when you round here. I will say don't round more than a tenth. So if it's like 1.92, 1.93 should round up. If it's 1.5, don't round up. Something else is going to happen. But now I'm hung, and then from here on out, all the problems are going to work basically like this. Clearly I have one carbon and two Oxygens. At the bottom of the sheet, it tells you C comes before O in this compound. So what I do is I've got at the bottom of the sheet here, 
I've written like C, O, right? Well, let's see, I've got C1, I don't write C1, O2. Okay, so the empirical formula for this is just CO2. Now, being clear, if you just wrote CO2, I would give you no credit. You'd have to show me this work to support that answer. Now, on the bottom, I'm going to ask you to try one yourself. 77.7% uh, iron and the remainder oxygen. And you're going to want to pause the video here because I'm going to give you like a 30 second break or whatever in the video. And then I'm going to just work it out. I'm not going to explain what I'm doing. I'm just going to show you my work done on the board. And you can check your work against mine. So again, you're going to have to pause this video and kind of restart it. But here we go. And you should get an answer like this. Now, again, if you've forgotten why each thing is there, it might help to label these. And again, it should go pretty straight. Now, in this particular case, the ratio is 1 to 1, because when I divided this, they both came out to 1.4. So I'm dealing with iron 2 oxide. It's the only thing that could be. So when I've got my letters FeO, something like this. Well, I've got ones on each, so I don't have to do anything else. My empiric formula is as easy as FeO. Now, most of the time, this isn't going to be so easy. Most of the time, it's going to have three or four elements going on. So let's take a look at a little harder problem here, specifically the chemical empirical formula for caffeine. So let's take a look at this. Let's clear this board and put up the percentages for caffeine. And to save ourselves some time, I'm going to start the chart off already here, assuming that you know how to put a percent as grams, because, well, frankly, you're just writing the percent number as grams. I think you'll pay for that. So here we go. All right, so now I've got the second problem set up as a table. I've labeled each capital letter, each element as its own row, and I've turned the percents into grams. Same thing I do every time. The first thing I need to do is I need to find the molar masses in the periodic table. So I'm going to look up C, H, N, and O. I'm being honest, these are the four most common chemicals you're going to encounter in an empirical formula, so you'll likely just memorize these extremely quickly doing these problems. But that being said, let's say you look at the periodic table, round them up, and then you'd find each of the following. Neat. So this works. What I want to do now is I want to take this number and divide it by this number. And the 5.2 for hydrogen divided by 1. And the 28.8 for nitrogen divided by 14. Etc. So that's just a calculator problem. And if you type those into your calculator, you'll get answers like these. Great. Now we're almost in the home stretch. These, again, aren't our final answer. I need to divide by the smallest number. So 4, 5, 2, here we are. I need to divide everything by 1.03. So I'm going to take 4.125 and divide it by 1.03. I'm going to take 5.2 and divide it by 1.03. I'm going to take 2.06 and divide it by 1.03. I'm going to take 1.03 and divide it by 1.03. And for this problem, most work out really well. 4 comes out to like 4.004. 2 comes out exactly evenly. 1 comes out exactly evenly. But 5 comes out to 5.04. Now, 5.04 is basically 5. And the problem is I round the higher challenge too much. So if I see a number that's close to a number, like, again, we're not talking like 5.25, we're talking like 5, then I'm just going to round it straight to 5. So change. And there we go. So I've got 4 carbons to 5 hydrogens to 2 nitrogens to 1 oxygen. And at the bottom of the chart, I've already written out CHNO. This thing kind of looks like... There we go. So what I need to do now is I need to translate this. If I've got a 4 here on carbon, it's got to be a 4 down here. If I've got a 5 here on hydrogen, it's got to be a 5 here. If I've got a 2 here on nitrogen, you guessed it, the 2 needs to come down. And oxygen, we don't write 1s in chemistry. So C4H5N2O is the empirical formula for caffeine, which is actually real life. You can go Google, what's the empirical formula of caffeine? As a matter of fact, I'm going to do that for you right now. <laughs> Pretty cool, isn't it? Okay. So I want you to try another one. I want you to work through this problem and see where you get. Okay, it's a lot harder problem. Let's work that and then let's come back together. So go ahead and pause the video, work the next problem on your worksheet, and then come back to me and try, um, try and see if it works with my work. So check it against my table here, which I'll put up on the, the screen here in like 10 seconds. 
So you likely got numbers like these. And the ones in red are probably the numbers you got. I want to point out that they're not all exactly right. But they're really, really close. This is basically 2, basically 9, basically 8. So I'm going to round them because those numbers are so close. They're up by a couple hundreds. So I'm going to take those and round them. So, all right, we only have one more thing to do, one more example, and then like a few for you to try. The example here is going to work almost identically until we get to the end column. So I'm going to go through it kind of fast here and then work it through with you once I get there. So let's go and clear the board and then come to a problem because you see the problem here about Mr. Barium, a bit of a joke, is that it's no longer percentages. It's just grams, but who cares? Because grams are grams and we can do a mole problem. So I'm just going to take it and write the answers directly out, something like this. And I'm going to take their molar masses. And at this point, that's pretty old hat too. So here we go. Easy enough. And now I do the division. First column divided by second column. The way we've been doing this all along gone. Great. And my smallest number here is 3.25. So I'm going to divide everything by 3.25. 3.25 divided by 3.25. Same. 4.878 divided by 3.25. 8.13 divided by 3.25. And when I do that, I get these answers behind me. And right here, we come to a problem. See, we can't round 2.5 and 1.5. Let me make those decimals a little more clear. All right, and I can't round that to like 3 and 2, although it's tempting. But I can still keep this ratio if I turn 0.5 into another number. And I can do that by just multiplying everything. So my question is, how do I make 0.5 into a number that's whole? And obviously, if it's a half, I just multiply by 2. So I take this whole sequence of numbers and times it by 2. Okay, so now I get 5, 3, 2, and 2. Now, I'll only do this in one of uh, three ways. I'll talk about this in a moment. But let's finish this chemical out first. C5H3N2O2. So my chemical again is here. C5H3N2O2. Whatever that is. Whoops. That guy. Sorry. Now, it's pretty straightforward. This step scares people, but it's not that bad. What we need to do here is make sure what we do actually matches and makes whole numbers. So again, if it's like within a tenth, just round it. But a half multiply by two, a third multiply by three, and a quarter multiply by four. I'll never do anything besides 0 0.5, 0 0.33, or 0.252. So this next one I'm going to ask you to do on your own has a multiplication step at the end. And it's not 0.5. Done. So try it. Pause the video. Do it. And see if your work matches mine when you're done. And then when we're done with this, guess what? You only have like three more of these to do for homework, and you're golden. So we're over the hump now. So try, try the last problem, and I want to see if you get your answers to match mine. Now, even before I get to the last step here, I have to decide which one to divide by. And I'm just going to divide by the smallest one, this 1.165. When I do that, I get the things behind me. And the problem here is this 5.33. See, I can't have an answer of 5.33. That's not a whole number. I can't, in good faith, round that down to 5 or up to 6, even though that would make less sense. So you turn all of these things and keep this relationship while making this a whole number. Well, to get rid of a third, to get rid of a 0.333, I need to multiply everything here by 3. And so when I do that, I get some pretty big numbers. And that's okay. Big numbers aren't a problem in this problem. So yeah, I get 6 times 3, that's 18. 9 times 3, that's 27. 1 times 3 is 3. And this number comes out to 16. Well, no, we're there. You got that one right. On your own, without me helping you here, I cannot make this problem any harder. You're golden. The rest of the homework is going to be fine for you. If you're stuck, I promise you the homework should help. So what I ask you to do is for the rest of the period today and into tomorrow, do that. There's only one more step we could even throw in here called the molecular formula, but this is the hard thing. And there will be two of these what's behind me on your test on Tuesday. Now, I'll be around on Monday to help. Don't freak out too much. But you're over the hump, and I promise it.